Our Yahweh, bless your magnificent name. We need you to speak to us your words of truth. We humbly ask and put our petition before you in the mighty name of Yahshua. Our minds, our understanding, help bring clarity to the things that you have for us as your people through the examples that have been laid out for us. We thank you for being mindful of us. We thank you for the blood of Yahshua. Thank you for being an Elohim to us, redeeming us, writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We hope that the Word can bring a performance. This is our hope. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We bless your magnificent name. Amen. All right, you may be seated, Israel. Everybody doing all right? Um. Have y'all taken note how often or how many times I talk on the mind? Good seeing you again, bro, Randy. Um, have y'all? I, I really, truly uh, need y'all to pay attention to what I'm saying. Um, I don't, you know, unless the Father gives the people the ears to hear, I don't expect for them to hear. Am I making any sense? We've always been a few. Um, always. And Yahweh has, has chose us simply because we were a few. Does this make any sense? Um, and so don't e- expect for us to fit in with the cosmos of this earth. Because it's not going to happen. That's why he called us out to be a peculiar people. A special people unto himself. All right, But... Everything, everything that we have ever experienced and ever known of those of us who have lived a little while, and I'm by no means the oldest um, man in this congregation, but I've been around long enough to to know change when I see it, um, to know decline when I see it. Um, The scriptures already told us that the world it's not going to get better, but it's going to get worse. And you, hey, you can be optimistic all you want. You can accuse me of being pessimistic all you want. But in that mindset, you have to be careful that you're not adopting a very liberal mentality. Are you listening to me? Because... When, when someone is a, a student of this word, um, and, and I submit that if you are immersed in this word, there will be a change that come about. Not only um, a complete turnabout of the whole entire man, naturally, but there will be one spiritually. If you read that word, and these sayings sink deep down in your heart, there's also going to be a change of mind and function. It's called the transformation because you're being reformed. And there's a world in us that does not want this reformation. It's a world of iniquity. Do you understand? And the world is waxing worse and worse and worse. All right? I'm going to be talking about the term liberal today, but I'm not going to be speaking about liberalism in a political sense. I'm going to speak about... um, liberal as opposed to the world and the environment as we know it as it continues to keep changing. And I submit to you the reason why it continues to keep changing. And mind you, I'm not concerned about the world at all. I'm only concerned about Israel. Are you following me? I submit to you that the reason why we are heavily influenced by this world, this cosmos, the environment is around us is, is because of our constant looking out among the heathen and in some way, somehow, wanting to be like them. Now, you have to understand, wanting to be like them is, is you look at them and, and uh, you ever heard of the word reminisce? You miss a few things of the flesh and stuff and, and say, that's a part of you that has to die. You're supposed to be in the stage now where you abhor that old man. Are you following me? And the mind, the mind will go back 
it will reset on you. You see people all the time who it, it seems like, man, it seems like that they knew so much word. Give it a year or two. If they fall away from the Father, it's like they went right back. And, and not only does the scriptures, but the apostles warns us about going back. Are you following me? Uh, but Satan has the deed to this world. This is his cosmos. And he's seeking to influence those of us who've been regenerated. He's after the seed of Israel. He's always been after the seed of Israel. That's what this whole thing is all about. And all of us have been plucked out of the hands of the Satan. And many of us, it, the impact has not yet still hit. What the Messiah has actually done. And the power of the victory that we can actually walk in. Some of us get it. Some of us don't. I was able to obtain this understanding as a very young man, very young man, uh, in my mid-twenties. I don't, I, I'll be the first to tell you, I do not know, or at that time I did not know anywhere near the wisdom and knowledge that I've obtained now. But my heart was right. Are you following me? My heart was right, um, as such as some of you. Um, there's only going to be a few of us to get to that kingdom, but we are rebuilding and we are restoring because the question was put forth when he comes, will he find faith? That's how scarce it's going to be. And then it goes on to tell us that we have to fight the fight of faith. And we have to actually lay a hold of eternal life. That means you have to put forth a very sincere effort. If you become lackadaisical or lethargic in this attitude, it won't be too long before Satan is already working on you and he'll get you to. I've seen many people be in this thing 10, 15, 20, 30 years and, 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 and then Satan gets them. And they forget the warning that the one thing that he always tries to do is wear out the patience of the saints. Because when we read these words, they don't really sink down. That's why that he has chose the dynamic and the foolishness of preaching. Because conviction comes when we hear the word preach. Because there's life put forth to the word that is already eternal. That's why he uses that dynamic. And of course, you know, immature people take it personally and they get offended and then they fall away. There's your by and by. You understand? Um, but somebody, as I often said, or as I have said before and I say again, somebody have to love you more than you hate yourself. And we're supposed to love ourselves. Hallelujah. Western society culture opposes the kingdom of Yahweh. Now you hear me? We talk about the West because we're in the West. If I was in another culture, I would approach it from a different point of view or perspective. Are you following me? But we're here. So this is what concerns us now. Western society, culture, and thought, what is really happening? John 8.32 says, you shall know the truth and truth shall make you free. Now, liberal. All right? Liberal. Listen to the definition. Open to new behavior or opinions, and willing, here, see the word right there? Willing to discard traditional values. In our definition, we can say willing to discard Yahweh's laws, which set morals and values for us. They have more liberal views towards marriage and divorce than some people, meaning, you know, they're, a little bit more relaxed. All right, in a political context, favoring maximum individual liberty. Now, pay attention to this line. Favoring maximum individual liberty, political and social reform. Now, this is the part I want you to focus on. This individual liberty. Are right, you following me? This is where one gets... I'm not speak in a spiritual sense, even though we have this up here naturally, okay? This is where one begins to 
put forth their own self-interest above the betterment of the whole. This is where one um, feels like, okay, uh, I've done paid my dues, now I'm going to live my life. And you have no life. I didn't understand at 25, 26 years old how much my life was over, but it was being revealed to me as I went on, more and more and more. Now, why would Yah require the patriarchs, the prophets, the apostles, and all the holy saints to go on before us? Why would he require for them to have a life of selfless sacrifice and to live unselfishly, but then have no requirements for us? And that's how we live today in our minds. We read and can tell that these people have definitely been transformed. There's something that is different about our people as opposed to the people of the world. But when we read it, that's for them, but it's not for us. That's why I tell you, and you've heard me say this before, when you watch people, you need to pay attention to them. Pay attention to the things they say and the things they do not say. Pay attention to the things that they do as well as the things they do not do. You don't hear too many people talking like that. That's how you find a true balance. Now, before you can pay attention to anyone else, you have first got to be an expert on yourself. Because there's, hey, I'm telling you, it, we are so blinded to ourselves. And, and it's like we can see everybody else so clear. And in essence, we become hypocritical mockers. So true. Are y'all listening to Israel? Yes, All right, listen very closely. A liberal de democratic state synonyms, meaning, now I want you to pay attention to liberal and then the synonyms, okay? Progressive, advanced. You know, now, what does our culture teach us? Seek for the old paths. Right. Search for the old ways. When you seek for them, you search for them, then... And only then will you find rest for your soul. But this is all about moving forward, progressive, advancing, modern, forward-looking, forward-thinking, progressive. That means, you know what you're doing? That means you're forgetting. Now, I know that the book tells us to forget the things that are behind, but it's talking about your sins, your iniquities, your transgressions, the old you and stuff. It's not talking about the old paths, the old ways. It's not talking about the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the rules, the guidelines. It's not talking about all that. You understand? Huh? So this is the mindset that the world is in, our world is in, and this is the mindset that our world functions in today, and this is what we find ourselves up against on a daily basis. But since we don't really think about it so much, we're influenced by it, and if we're not thinking about it, we wouldn't even know how bad we are influenced by it. If we're not meditating on the things of God, we would never be able to see how contrary we are. Am I making any sense? In essence, we will be perpetuating our own blindness. All right? So while we should be looking back, which is looking to the future, they don't want you to look back. They want you to only to look towards the future based on your mind where you are at today. So everything you have amassed in your mind today from that and that knowledge and that what you've amassed and gained, you look from that perspective forward. And that is the reason why we're being destroyed. Because the things that were already written aforetime, they were written for our what? Our learning. Our admonition. And our instructions. You see what's going on? All right. Enlightenment, reformers, radical, a liberal social agenda. Now, liberal theology. Regarding many traditional beliefs as dispensable. You hear that? Look at this. Invalidated by modern Fault. Everything I just got finished saying. You see what I mean? Things that have been commonly traditionally believed, it's all invalid. It's obsolete. Modern thought, modern thought trumps everything that has come before. This is the world we find ourselves in. And this is the world you find yourself functioning in. And if you're not careful, this spirit will overcome you. Are you following? Or liable to change. All right? Liberal education, 
concerning mainly with broadening a person's general knowledge and experience rather than with technical or professional training. Again, everything for today, forget about yesterday. All right? Liberal culture and mindset of today, non judgmentalism. Anything goes. And who are we to be critical? If you notice that we live in a society now that, that uh, the biggest thing is nobody wants to be judged. Because if nobody's judged, then that means there's no absolutes. And if there's no absolutes, then there's no Yah. There's no creator. Are you following? And like we do, you know, many of us take a spiritual bribe in judgment, judging on curves. You know how we do that, right? Meaning, if you're in a position to where you need to judge a matter, and you have already have been guilty of that same sin or condemnation, you follow me? You, you, you will relax y'all's judgment based on your own experience rather than upholding and supporting and defending what the law already says, thereby making you stronger and better and making your brother or sister stronger and better. And so what we do is we let our little emotions, our little feelings, which we have, don't understand, get in the way, and we pervert judgment. So therefore, you can't be a judge. Because Yahweh didn't ask us to judge in favor of your experience. He asked us to support him. Is that right? Yes, sir. And what he has already laid out. Strong's a <clears throat> strong authority is at best highly suspected and best avoided and opposed. Meaning anytime there's a strong authority figure sitting in front of you, um, what these people would do, you know, they will begin to oppose that authority figure and avoid that authority figure. And they will go around and teach others to do the same. Why? Because we're not going to have nobody judge us. The freedom of individuals is more important than any religion or creed. Y'all get this? <laughs> All criticism is destructive, including constructive criticism. Except when a liberal-minded person decides to judge or be critical of non-liberals. The only culture is better than another is when it has liberal values. So you can already see that this world, this cosmos, is totally against our culture. The kind of people we should be as Israelites is the reason why we need to come out. Liberalism opposes our Israelite heritage. And we're going to give you some live examples here that we're all familiar with, okay, to, to get an understanding. In Bereshit 2.15, Genesis 2.15, and Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge, now notice, what is this, the tree of the knowledge of? Good and what? Evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest, thereof thou shalt surely do what? All right. Now we'll go to the third chapter. All right. And the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, is it true that Elohim has said, do not eat of every tree of the garden? There's our first democratic liberal process right there. All right? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For y'all do know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as mighty ones, knowing good and evil. Now, the philosophy of liberal thinking. 
You have the right to enjoy yourself and live your own life. Is that true in Hebrew, being an Israelite? Hmm? I mean, you can enjoy yourself and live your own life as long as it's under the laws and statutes and rules and guidelines of Yah. But see, this is without instruction. This is all about you, your own. As a matter of fact, doing so will increase your knowledge because you'll be exploring the world for yourself. All right? And wisdom, and you will become like gods yourself. That is what the Hasatan was presenting to Eve. Now, if I step out from under this authority figure right here, yeah, and you just go out here and have your own experience, and live your life independent of the Creator. And then you will be like mighty ones yourself. Cora, we often talk about this cat, right? Cora plainly displayed liberalism in opposing the authority of Moses. Cora claimed was that all Israelites had equal authority with Moses. Have we ever heard this before with this liberal elders doctrine? Y'all see the reason why we oppose these spirits? Are y'all getting this? Well, let's, it goes a little bit deeper than what we're hitting face value here. Truth is, Korah hated the authority Yahweh had gave to Moses. Now, Korah wouldn't have hated it if, Yah if Yahweh gave it to him. Y'all getting this, right? Cora organized a committee of 250 members. I mean, after all, isn't that power in numbers? And the 250 members he got was people who were in the priesthood. Bar McBar, 16.2, and they rose up before Moshe and certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes. In other words, not just lay members or people in the congregation. Rulers. Of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So shouldn't this strengthen Coral's position even greater? And they gathered themselves together against Moshe and against Haran. And they said unto them, ye take too much upon you. Here's the, here's the kicker. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. And Yahweh is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of Yahweh. Watch this. What position did they already hold if they were already princes and men of renown? They were in a position of authority above the congregation in reference to influence. And when Moshe heard it, he fell on his face. Moses was a humble man. Meek man. He knew what was going on. He knew the spirit that was involved. You know what I mean? Like we had to get the funny brand out of the well. You know, I, we need to start recording these things so people, we, you know, we can show these people 15, 20 years down the road that this is a spirit you may be confronted with one day. You understand what I mean? Because this stuff is real. But when it's happening amongst us in our time, because we don't read it exactly like it happened right here, but it happens a different way, but it's the same spirit. It's hard for us to put two and two together and realize this is what's going on. But those of us who are spiritual and have spiritual discernment, we can go, ah, here we go again. That spirit again. You understand? Because remember, it's operating in a new dispensation of time, so therefore it's going to approach things a little bit different. These people know how to read the book and say, well, we're not going to do it that way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you get it? And he spake unto Korah and to all his company, saying, even tomorrow, Yahweh will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he have chosen he will cause to come near unto him. This is what Moses said. He's dependent totally on y'all. And Moshe said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, ye sons of what? Levi. Talking to these 250 people. Seemeth it but a small thing going to verse 9. All right. 
seeming a small thing unto you that Yah of Israel has separated you from the what? Congregation of Israel. To bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of Yahweh and to stand before the congregation to do what to the congregation? Ministered unto them. And he had brought thee near to him and all thy brothers, the sons of Levi, with thee and seek you the priesthood also? You getting this? Who put Haran and Moshe in their place? Verse 11. And he also put them in their place. For which cause both ye and all thy company are gathered together against Yahweh. And Moses didn't take this as a, a personal attack against him. All right? You, see, that's how we do. We see men, and especially people who are not too knowledgeable in the word, and they start rising up and stuff. They, they're assuming that they're rising up against us. Huh? We know what the book says. We know what's going on. You follow me? And you're going to have an epidemic of a lot of young people coming in one in two years, and yet they, now, they, now they're Torah experts. We did, it's an epidemic. It seems like we deal with this all the time. Amazing. <laughs> For which cause both you and all the company are gathered together against Yahweh, and what is Haran that ye mummer against him? In other words, man, what did he do? He's a high priest. What did he do? It caused you to murmur. Here it is again, that mouth again, isn't it? Seems to be the death, don't it? And Moses sent to call, watch this one, Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Elab, look at this, which said, we will not come up. In other words, they're not recognizing Moses' authority in this. Moses calling them up, and they said, man, we ain't coming up because you say come up. You have rebellion straight up happening right here. Huh? <clears throat> this rebellion is an example of the anti-authoritarian liberal attitudes such as we are seeing today. You have to have authority and structure in everything you do. Korah and his group were very soft on sin and judgment. You remember Absalom, right? Absalom went and stood at the gate if I were king and I was judging your matters and I would and of course if you believe that you're not going to be you know judgment's going to happen to your favor and stuff would you not want to go listen to a voice like that you getting that spirit huh the philosophy of this thinking is the freedom of the individual is more important than any religion or creed. In other words, we're, 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 we'll put your welfare and your being above the word, above Yah's laws. I mean, after all, we're going to be progressive in this time. I mean, as we, we, we're now 6,000 years removed, 4,000 years removed, Something like that, and 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 we we're progressive. We we do not need these ancient influences on us now. We're a whole lot more smarter than what they used to be. We're more technologically advanced. We don't need any instructions and rules. We can guide ourselves. This is the philosophy of this country. And we'll get into the moral decay to, so you can understand better pastor's mindset, the reason why I'll be going off at times. America is steeped in liberal values. This attitude and philosophy is a stench in y'all's nostrils. If we say judgmentalism is always wrong, then we should have to say, um, what right does y'all got to judge us then? I mean, if it's wrong for us to judge, then that means y'all don't have no right to judge us. This is the philosophy of the world. If we say 
that strong authority must be evil. You know what I mean? After all, look how they carry themselves. Look how strong they are in standing on the law. We are also rejecting y'all's authority. If we say that the freedom of the individual is more important than the laws of Yahweh or creed, we are directly confronting and opposing the revelation of the scriptures. If we say no culture is better than another, then we are ignorant of the word culture. Because culture defines what religion one is espoused to. And we live in a culture where they have espoused themselves to the religion of Christianity. We Israelites lay claim exclusive, exclusively, I should have said, truth about Yahweh and Yah's salvation. We are the ones charged by him to be ministers to teach and not the world teach us. Right. Is that right? Yes, That's what the book teaches us, right? Let's look at another practice. Abortion. This wicked practice appears in many different forms throughout history. Notice I said in many different forms. Pagan child sacrifice. Western society would condemn the evil of allowing infants to pass through the fire of Moloch. Will we not? With the way we view things today and the way our minds are so twisted and stuff, will we not champion ourselves against that? But this wicked American culture mother murders thousands of babies in the womb. They don't even wait for the babies to get out. They go get them. But when you have a liberal mentality, hey, you give yourself a pass because you're not burning them in a the fire. So you're not going to associate it with transgressing the law. Hmm? Because you're more progressive today. Abortion is now state sponsored. There's never in the history of the world a thing as state sponsored child sacrifice. Even the most despicable pagan cities of 4,000 years ago was not this wicked. Now, who's the pagans? with all our technological advances and our smart mindsets and y'all getting this? Is this stuff sinking down or am I going too fast? Israel, our laws, if a pregnant woman was harmed and she lost the baby, the offender would be put to death. Is that not Torah? Is that true? The scripture shows us what Yahweh's attitude was towards babies in the womb. You get this? Look at this pagan culture and society we're in now. You ain't got to worry about a woman being smitten that seed passed from her. Now they just volunteer for it and they go in after it. You see it? Now you see the reason why they want the scriptures away and out of everybody's hands. Because it's bringing too much judgment. And we don't want your conscience oppressed until we want you to be free. We don't want you feeling condemned in the in choices and decisions that you make. Because after all, these are old-fashioned traditional values right here. And now we're worse. than the worst pagan culture. I mean, at least they did wait for them to be birthed and pass them through the fire. We're definitely breaking Torah because we're going in the womb. And if Yahweh already had that type of indictment against a man that would uh, smite a woman to take seed from her, and the penalty was an eye for an eye and two for two, life for life, stroke for stroke, isn't that something? If that was then... Who changed it? That's why I keep telling a lot of religions that's in this world, people who especially be of faith, they're liberal in their theology. Davarine 12, 28, let's watch this. Hear and observe all these words which I command thee, that I may as go well with thee. The whole idea is you 
observe these, you hear these words, you obey them for the purpose that it will go well with you and with your children after you forever. When you do as that which is good and right in the sight of who? Or in the sight of the state influence laws. The custom and the traditional changes of today. No. You do that which is right in the sight of Yahweh thy Elohim. <laughs> when Yahweh thy Elohim shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, thou shalt succeed them and dwell us in their land. Take heed to thyself that you be not snared by following them. I'm watching people being removed in the spirit of their mind. Want to go back and be just like the nations. After that, they be destroyed from before thee, and thou shalt, and, and thou, that thou inquire not after their Elohims or their mighty ones. Don't you look to these nations' gods, saying, How did these nations serve their mighty ones? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto Yahweh, thy Elohim. For every abomination to Yahweh, which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they are burnt in the fire to their gods. What things soever I command you observe to do it, you shall not add thereunto, nor diminish from it. You won't have to come out. Start here. When you do not come out of her, your mind will think like them and reason like the heathens around you. Let's watch to see what a king in Israel did. He has the same warning as anybody else. Malachi King, 16 and 1, 2 Kings, look at this. And the 17th year of Pelech, the son of Renal, Aizo, the son of Yachtim, king of Yehuda, began to reign. Twenty years old was Isaiah when he began to reign and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem and did not that which was right in the sight of Yahweh his Elohim like David his father. If David was his father, he ain't too far removed from him, is he? But he walked in the way of the kings of who? Israel. Israel, the northern tribes. Yea, and made his sons to pass through the what? Now, how in the world do you know these laws, statutes, and commandments, knowing that Dawi was your father? He taught you the right way. Why would you go out here and adopt the, the ways of the heathens, the ways of the pagans? In other words, or in essence, worship their mighty ones. That's what Christianity has done to us. And Yahweh, through his great mercies, has brought us out of this. You know how many rituals and ceremonies and holidays that they have today that is in stark contrast to the laws and the prophets, what they've written? And yet they champion themselves as people are following the book. But on closer examination, these people are greater than any pagan nation has ever existed. Here's a king that knew the law, but yet still he did the rituals of the heathens. According to the abomination of the heathens whom Yahweh cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Oh, we might not be physically doing that today, but you might as well be doing the damn, same damn thing. You got Christmas trees up in your home. Christmas trees all in your land. Defiling it. Now we're also up against, look, the emancipation of our women. We're in a mess when Israelite women want equal status with men. You know how many women today is literally showed out when you start talking about patriarchal rule? I mean, just show there, and they think that they're going to get to the kingdom of Yah. 
with that attitude. The woman would try to tell y'all what to do when she got to the kingdom. Once the woman was out of the home and entered into the workforce, divorce skyrocketed. Are we talking about facts in this country right here? When they can make them a W-2 wage earner, thereby making them, you know, pay taxes like anybody else to help increase the deficit for the federal government because it damn sure ain't no surplus. You take them out of the home, out of the place where they should be, which is rearing and raising the children, the first-line teachers. See what happens? Are you seeing what's happening? Mind begins to change. Why? She ain't out there in front of her husband. She out there in front of Joe Dick, Tom, Harry, Mutt, and Jeff. This thing gets serious. Teenage pregnancy starts. Increase in juvenile crime. The woman has been removed from her role. All because of liberalism. After all, they're making you better, woman. Y'all have set rules and guidelines for our homes, has he not? The male is the authority and the wife is his what? She's there to help the man. 1 Corinthians 11 lays out that authority, doesn't it? Husband and his wives were to stay close, look at this, in sexual relations. Y'all hear that? With the woman out of the home exposed to other men all day long, what do you think is going to happen? When she's removed from the home. Let's visit this. 1 Corinthians 7, 1. Now concerning things whereof you wrote unto me is good for a man to not touch a what? A woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own. And you probably be wondering, why come I highlight that word own? Because we're going to define that word own. Because that word own in our translation looks like this word own. But when we look behind these words, this word own has a different meaning than this word on. And this word on says, look, let every man have his what? Own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Hey, didn't we just get finished solidifying monoligamy? If we look at that face value based on the pensmanship that they've given us? Nevertheless, I'm putting the Greek word in there now, so you can see the difference. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own Hatun, wife, and let every woman have her home idios, husband. See the difference? I thought they were the same. If you read the translation, but if you go look behind the words, why is that one? What's the difference between that on and that on? The Greek understood it. Apparently the translators didn't. Or either they did understand it, but they wanted to bring forth their Society. They're a liberal society. Yeah. After all, we are becoming more progressive today, aren't we? Amazing, isn't it? Watch this. Why use two different Greek words here for own? I mean, if it's own, why have her two in idios? Why use two Greek words for the word own? The hatun example, a man eat his own hatun. In other words, I'm using the example showing when the Bible says, let every man look, eat his own bread to the point being that we should not be sharing the bread spoken of is exclusive to him. Personal ownership. You understand? The idios example, Jesus returned to his own idios country. There were others who lived in his what? Own country. Because it was their own country, also meaning corporate more than one. So you're going exclusive, that means a man had more than one wife, each wife was exclusive to him. Two. 
This woman, even though she was part of, let's say, country, meaning that man, each one of those women in their own country, corporate belonged to that one man. I told you, I'm going to tear the hell out of Christianity. <laughs> Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. See, the way it's written, you'd have never known that if we didn't get down and define these words. You've still been thinking in your American mentality on. Monoligamy only. Now, Paul wrote that. That means he was very familiar with polygyny. The wife had not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband have not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one another except to be for consent. Uh, Defraud ye not one another except to be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to what? Prayer and fasting, and why? And come together again that do what? Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. Now check this out now. So that means you take, if we follow this liberal society today, you take the woman out of home, you put her in an environment that she was not designed for. She's going to be tempted by Satan. They're about a divorce rate. Today, what they call fornication and adultery is going to increase. These women in raised and reared in this type of society, they don't have too many morals and values to teach their daughters. So it's only going to take a few generations before you have all these teenage pregnancies. Because now that the, the man's voice has been diminished in the society, and the women have the jobs or getting the jobs now greater than men. Yes. And we get in the rule. The same thing that happened in slavery when slave masters were beating the hell out of Mandingo in front of the woman to diminish his authority to where she cannot even trust in him as a protector anymore. Uh-huh. Now men have been castrated by this same very liberal society. Right. And women have taken it hook, line, and sinker because they have gotten a taste of the power They still need a man to take away their reproach. But I'll be damned they're going to submit. This is the cancer liberalism. And so it's, what it is, it's progressively cancerous to us as an Israelite people. Do you understand? That's why today when you start talking about the old paths, the old ways, the way that Yahweh had planned it for us and waited for it to be, are you following me? These women who have been bitten by the serpent or the fruit of lies and have accepted this philosophy, this teaching, this idea today, they're not going to submit to it. You get it? So I'm up here making my mockings and jeerings. I'm everyone. I, believe me, I know to a greater, deeper level what's really going on. I was trying to explain to you the destruction of our society. Now, we have today where men, where women have to almost be out of the house because they can't find a strong head. But now we have women that can actually work at home and not be out of the house and not be around all these influences that Satan would tempt them. <laughs> How did that Proverbs 31 woman work then? Uh-huh. How was she able to command and even able to buy a field? What did she do? See the difference in our culture? Yah, Yah has not designed our Israelite women to be out there rubbing elbows with the Gentiles. Especially on a daily basis. Because it's too much an effect on your mind. You go out there, you start making your own money, you going to submit to a man? Especially if you make more money than him. And he going to tell you what to do? You going to throw y'all away. 
You have to be some type of special woman to submit to Yahweh's rule then. What if you don't have any knowledge of Yahweh's laws, statutes, and commandments? All you have is progressive liberalism in front of you. Mm -hmm. And what has been taken away from it? Christianity don't teach us about Yahweh's laws. And then guess what is the greatest religion in the United States of America? Christianity. And they're definitely not preaching Torah. So the women or the men will not understand Yah's ways. All they will be able to look at these scriptures through is through the lenses and through the eyes of progressive liberalism. Thereby deceiving themselves. That's the reason why I say Christianity is the strong delusion. Because when we're in Yah's order, the way it should be, everybody functioning in their roles the way that it should be, then there's harmony and peace. You didn't see all these damn Jezebels cutting the damn food when I started talking about patriarchal rule? They knew. That spirit knew in them. Even though they didn't understand it, that spirit knew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That spirit damn so knew. They go, all right, Jezebel, here we go. We're going to have a fight with Elijah again. I told you, this Elijah don't run. I got that the empire Jezebel on the run. See, this is spiritual, brothers and sisters. You don't have to worry about too much divorce or too much um, illicit sexual unions if the woman is at home. God in the house. Being the first line teachers to the children and being a help meet to her husband. She got time for that. But you put her in the same environment as a man is in. That's the one thing I liked um, being in the special operation units in the military is because I didn't ever hardly ever seen a woman throughout the day. Never. I would have to go clear across poles to see a woman. I mean clear across poles. So the units I was in, there were no women because they simply could not do what we do. You understand? It was, they weren't designed to do that. You understand? Now there's units where men and women standing right next to each other. When I went to Primary Leadership Development, PLDC, that's the first um, course that you'll take prior to becoming an NCO of your sergeant. I'm sitting up here and um, we're out in the field, and I'm sitting up here standing in a foxhole next to a, a little woman like this. And we're pulling guard duty. Are you following me? Because we're doing all things because we have to teach the soldiers, right? And you're talking about something so uncomfortable. I'm already in a unit where there's no women. I went to boot camp, no women. <laughs> Are you following me? I went to jump school, but the women was mostly way on down the other end, the ones that did pass. Now, if I'm, so I, I didn't hardly have any influence with women, so to see this little woman sitting right in the foxhole next to me, I'm up here like, what are you doing here? That's my mindset. You understand know what I mean? You know what they'll be, they'll be upset at me because I don't believe in equality. And I'm making sense? At least one thing, when we sh had to shoot up and do light night laying now, and then we had to jump out at night, 2.30 2 in the morning and stuff, she wasn't there then. You understand? Women do not belong in war zones. So Satan is banking on you looking out progressively, forgetting the laws of Yah, and accepting all this influence and this authority and this power that he wants to give you. He wants to subject you to things that you should have never been subject to. Now it's hard today to even find a good woman. Even harder to find a good man. And if you had a good woman, a good man, they don't even want each other. Because of the influences of the world. Liberal mindset is a cancer to our people. 
It builds rebellious teenage culture. It's, it, this is the reason why for the homosexual and the lesbian revolution. Because we have totally removed, at least one thing about this nation, they were religious. They had some form of morals and had some form of some type of value. They don't have them anymore now. I venture to say you can go to a Christian church and see two lesbians, two homosexuals sitting next to each other. Y'all understand this? So we don't have to worry about the liberal spirit coming here because it won't be able to stand a chance. Because we're going to get it. But this is all an attack against Yah in order for Satan to make sure that he keeps up his, his extreme attack against the kingdom of Yah. Because remember, in Israel, every child that part of the matrix belonged to him. So if we can change everything and redefine everything, we can get these people to start thinking a little bit different. They can be in transgression and not even know it. You understand? Yeah. And that's why I stay hard on the religion of Christianity because it does nothing to keep you in remembrance of Yahweh's laws, which are righteous. I think that's a righteous law. If a man smites a woman that is pregnant and her seed departs from her, you kill that baby, damn it, you deserve death yourself. I'm not going to sit up there and want to give you no damn three squares and a cot. No, we're going to take you out and we're going to kill you. You know what that would do? That would deter another man from wanting to think about smiting a pregnant woman. So we'll be able to put away the evil from us. Today you can go out and murder somebody, you guarantee 20 years, three squares and a cot. It's like the ones that do evil are more protected than the righteous. <laughs> That's why I'm opposed against this society. You understand what I mean? I see clearly exactly what's going on, but to be able to speak to you and articulate is another story. I mean, I try to go around a thousand different ways to paint many, many different pictures to show you the decline in exactly what's going on. It's an honorable thing for a woman to guide the house. It's an honorable thing for her to bear children. It's an honorable thing for her to be a help mate to a husband. That's an honorable thing. Our society has made it dishonorable. Are y'all getting this? And if we don't come out, we're going to continue to keep having these same cancerous thoughts, same influences upon us, and we're going to continue to keep justifying. Mind you, Satan wants to fill you up with selfishness in his last hour. That's the religion of the day, selfishness. All about me. I got to live. Well, you're supposed to be living. You're supposed to be dying while you're yet living. I mean, the Bible even tells young women when your heart begin to wax cold against Christ, you will want a husband. That's a grand design. You're supposed to want a husband. But look what it says, though. You understand what I mean? That doesn't mean you hate him or nothing like that. That means that your desires are, are pointed towards something else. You better hope you get a good one. We got to come out. You have to come out in your mind. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. You're going to have to come out in your mind. Really? So Satan has capitalized on beating our kingdom by attacking our women. So when I say I feel sorry for you women, I do. I feel sorry for because you have a lot to overcome. I feel sorry for men too because you've been castrated and you got a lot to overcome as well. <laughs> but it's important for our women today to get a hold of themselves. And be good holy daughters of Zion so that the generation coming behind them don't have the same challenges that you've had. Just maybe 
before the king come, we can have a holy generation. Just maybe. Y'all didn't design me to be a first line teacher for the children. I have a role, men have a role, women have a role. And we ain't gonna be judged based on how we perform our roles. So the patriarchal rule, which is correct, just true and right because y'all said it, it's here. It's the only thing that's gonna remind us of what the marriage covenant is all about and we don't get it. You can see that there's a lot of people that's going into perdition. And most of this comes simply because they won't change their mind and neither will they humble themselves. Now that's totally irrelevant to me, it makes no difference because when it's all said and done, you have to save yourself. I can't save you. I can love you all day long, but I can't save you. I can't force you to do Yah's will. And will not force you to do Yah's will because then guess what? It wouldn't be your will. Yah has been good to us, and he's still good to us, and always will be good to us. Y'all getting this? Satan has done a good job at attacking the home. Did y'all understand this? Did y'all get this? All right, let us stand. <clears throat> Brother Jerry did a good job painting there, didn't he? Nice commandments up there. Oh, it's good. Glory to the King. Oh, Y'all, yeah, we do thank you for all things. Pray these saying, sink deep down in our hearts, and we get your truth. In my name, Yahshua. Amen. Shalom, saints. Y'all be encouraged out there. King coming.